nuts because you were not even of the middle class. And then when they started to come for the poor, there was no one left to stand up for you because everyone else had been taken out. Do you understand how this works? The communists eat their own. They start to kill each other. They take everything from everyone, and they produce nothing. That's Bernie Sanders in a nutshell. I got a lot more to say about the revolution comes to America. Be here. What began last week in Iowa, what voters here in New Hampshire confirmed tonight, is nothing short of the beginning of a political revolution. Title of the show, Revolution Comes to America. Make no mistake about it, this nice old man is a very dangerous man who could bring about fascism in the blink of an eye. You don't know that. What you don't understand is that he himself may not be this fascist dictator that we all sense is underneath the surface of that crumpled old suit. But he will surround himself with the most vicious people you could ever imagine. That's the way it's done. I'm trying to warn you, but you can't get it. So I'll play for you now a little entertainment. Here's Vladimir Lenin himself, because very few people know what he actually sounded like in the original Russian, in a speech from many years ago in clip five. Nothing. Okay, in the past, the country was in one way or another governed by the rich or by the capitalists. But for now, the first time the country is being governed by the classes and moreover by the masses of those classes which capitalism formerly oppressed. Bernie Sanders can take this exact speech and run with it. You understand what's going on. Isn't it time to put your hat on forward? Isn't it time for you to stop paying attention to sports and entertainment and realize your country is being taken away from you in front of your eyes? How dumb can the American male be? The answer is there's no limit to the stupidity of the American male. There is no limit to it. It's sky high. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Doesn't it? You know how many people died under communism in the last century? Do you know how many people died from the slave labor camps, from being sent to the gulag, for being politically incorrect? Do you know what the phrase politically incorrect actually means? You use it somewhat with a, a certain degree of chagrin, like, eh, it's funny, politically incorrect. Do you know who these monsters are who are trying to control your thoughts and your words and your deeds? Do you know what they want to do to you when they have total and absolute power? Do you know what they might do to you if this psychotic with the rumpled suit from the gutters of New York should become president? Many of you don't know because you are Americans who have grown up in a spoiled nation without any problems, with no history. You have no history. You are a new generation of brainwashed individuals who don't know anything about virtually anything. Well, I do. And I want to take some callers on this issue of mine today. Today's show is entitled Revolution Comes to America where the soul of America itself is up for grabs. It's as clear as a bell. Whether you like him or not, and I happen to like him a lot, Trump represents America's hope. The Democrat Party, whoever they may select, the corrupt, aged, goiterous Hillary, or the psychotic, rumpled co communist Bernie, these two represent the communist revolution. And again, I want to remind you, you may not understand what I'm saying to you. In the original communist manifesto, by Marx and Engels. They wrote their ideas for how the capitalist society of their time would be replaced first by socialism and then finally by communism. Those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it. And apparently the youth of America who are cheering this rumpled old de devil know nothing about history and they're condemned to repeat it. Leon W. ABC, comment please on the Savage Nation. Yes, I heard uh, your uh, uh, Bernie uh, speak, and I heard uh, your uh, Lenin speech, and I heard your translation, uh, your translation of the Lenin speech, and I am chilled to the bone. It's 
terrifying. And Michael, you're always right on these subjects. And but tell me, what can you do? Evil in my mind almost always triumphs. Almost always. Yes. In history. Obama is pure evil, and he gets away with virtually everything. Now he was stopped by the Supreme Court yesterday. You do know that he hit a stone wall with them on on the coal thing. But he is pure evil with a smile. But he's nothing compared to what Bernie Sanders would do. That's the issue that you have to understand. Obama kicked the door of social, uh, the door to socialism wide open. If Bernie walks in, we'll have naked communism in this country. They will use the street gangs that burned down Baltimore, the street gangs that burned down Ferguson. They will use them as government enforcers, as sure as I'm sitting here. They will deputize them. They'll give them green uniforms, and they will be used to intimidate the middle class, as sure as I'm sitting here. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely Yeah, I am right. I'm a visionary. I see things more clearly than almost anybody has ever seen them in the media. I am Linkeus, the pilot seer of the Argonauts. I ride atop the highest mast in the world. And by the way, my friend Lee from WABC, honestly, have you ever heard a, a speech of Lenin in his own voice other than today on the Savage Nation or that of Stalin? Have you ever heard them speak? Never. Never. Well, this is an example of the best that radio can offer it's a combination of history and politics and humor today there's not much humor because i have very little to laugh about there's too much at stake and i am the son of immigrants immigrants who fled russia by the way isn't it odd that russia has now come to america but not even the russia of today but the russia of yesterday has come to america isn't it odd that it would be a street radical from new york bernie sanders one of the most dangerous men in political history. Oh, I know, he's a simple old man, and he's not dangerous. You are wrong. Watch his snaky eyes when he speaks. He's extremely smart. I will tell you that. I know people. Bernie is very smart. Bernie is very smart. And Bernie is also a street fighter. Bernie will fight for what he believes in. In that sense, he is a true revolutionary. And if you want to see friends dragged away by the secret police... My friends, you say it can happen here. I'm telling you it is happening here. You say, what are you talking about? That could never happen here. Why? We have a media that would never permit that to happen. Well, it just happened two weeks ago in Oregon. They shot a man dead in Oregon. The thugs from the federal government, or was it the Oregon State Police, killed a man who was protesting on federal land, and no one in the media covered it. You say it can happen here. It is happening here. It is happening here in a little way, little by little by little. Police are being shot like bowling pins around the country by you-know-who. Do I have to spell it out for you? Here's another one. Just happened now. Deputies wounded and a gunman killed after a shooting at Maryland Panera. They won't identify the gunman. Oh, no, no picture of the gunman. A gunman walked up to two deputies who were eating in a Panera and shot one of them dead. The other one gave chase. He was injured in a shootout with the piece of garbage. But they won't show the gunman the cowardly gunman who walked up and shot the cops. Why are they doing this all of a sudden? Because they've been empowered by Al Sharpton in the White House. WABC, John, welcome to the Savage Nation. Uh, hello, Michael. I just want to talk about what you said about, the last thing you said about hearing the Stalin's voice in the Soviet Union. You can't even see a picture of Stalin in the Soviet Union. I've been there in the 70s, in the early 70s, and about the communists, I have relatives, my great uncle, who happened to be assassinated under the Tito government, and my two cousins, who happened to be Franciscan priests, who were killed in Yugoslavia and in uh, Herzegovina. And uh, ki kill killed by who? They were assassinated by. Uh, there was thirteen priests that were assassinated by the communist government. Right, and you do know the left in America hates the Catholic Church, except they love this Pope because he's one of them. You understand that, of course, to the T, that this Pope is not really a, a religious man. He is a politician of the left. The, the Jesuits used to be known as the Black Pope's defender of the faith. Unfortunately, got this new religion where in the Central America in the 70s, five uh, uh, Jesuits were slain and one Marino. I don't know what the hell happened to the Jesuits. And as a practicing Catholic... This pope pisses me off. I mean, <laughs> well, we're going to get into the into the Lenin's pope, which I wrote about in, in great detail in, in Government Zero, John. In fact, I'm going to send you a copy of Government Zero so you can read it for yourself. How much lower does it get 
than a street thug like Al Sharpton, having been in and out of the White House, what was it, 35, 40 times with this corrupt communist president of ours? The smiling man in the White House. Al Sharpton. I, if someone told me in the 70s that this piece of garbage would have a television show, that this piece of garbage would be in and out of the White House 30 times, and that this piece of garbage would pick the Attorney General, this piece of garbage would be sitting down with the agitator from the New York gutters, Bernie Sanders in Harlem, I would say you're crazy. It's impossible that anyone take this piece of garbage seriously. But it just shows you what's happened to America. The world is upside down. The best people are rejected and called right-wing maniacs, and the left-wing vermin are now running the country from the media to the White House. And say, well, all right, what are you going to do about it? I'm talking about it still. I'm still on the radio. I'm still writing best-selling books. That could change, by the way. Nothing is forever. Nothing is forever. That could all change, my friends. If you think these voices of freedom are permanently here for you, you're mistaken. We're not permanently here for you. There are strong forces at work, as I speak, trying to get people like me silenced. Do you understand that? In ways you could never imagine. They're trying to silence the voices that are speaking loudly against this communist revolution. And one day you may find out when you wake up that the voices have won. And they will have succeeded for reasons you would never believe. But I'll get to that at another time. Crowd goes wild for Sanders and Sharpton breakfast in Harlem. Would you believe that you'd see a day like today? Pay close attention because revolution has come to America. I want to do something for you again. I want you to listen to, to Vladimir Lenin. This is his actual voice. Soon after the communists took power in Russia. Listen carefully. Right. What he's saying is this. He's saying, what is Soviet power? He said, in the past, the country was in one way or another governed by the rich or by the capitalists. But now, for the first time, the country is being governed by the classes and, moreover, by the masses of those classes which capitalism formerly oppressed. Does it sound familiar? It should sound familiar. I want you to listen now to clip number 12 of America's Lenin, Bernie Sanders, now meeting with one of the worst people in the history of America in Harlem. Listen to Bernie Sanders. This is a message not just to our opponents, but to those who support me as well, that we will need to come together in a few months and unite this party and this nation because the right-wing Republicans we oppose must not be allowed to gain the presidency. Oh, we're going to gain the presidency. And men like you will be thrown into the dustbin of history where you belong to begin with. I can assure you that Trump will be the president. If you were to say to me, are you a betting man? No, I don't bet on anything. I don't gamble on anything. I don't have any stocks. I have no bonds, and I don't gamble. But if I were to gamble, I would gamble that Trump is going to be the president of the United States, and they will be kicked to the dustbin of history where they belong, and people will again walk around proudly in this country. Never again will we see sailors crying when captured by the Iranians. We will see Iranians crying and begging for their life when they are captured by the Americans. Never again will this military be run by radical feminists who have never fired a shot nor flown an airplane. Never will the Air Force again be run by a woman who can't fly a Piper Cub. Never again will the U.S. Navy be run by a woman who has never driven a rowboat who is now running the Navy. No, my friends, we will have America back again. It all starts with rhetoric, and it ends in some very, very different ways. And make no mistake about it, Bernie Sanders' rhetoric is very clear. One thing about him is he doesn't lie. He doesn't lie about it any more than Lenin lied about what he was. He opposes you. He opposes America. He is a jealous loser. He's jealous of anyone who looks better than him, has a better suit, better shoes, and a, and a nicer-looking wife. When I saw the, I, I don't know how else to put it other than saying the beautiful Trump family on the stage last night, I said America is back again. I said Camelot is back again. I said, my God, wouldn't it be beautiful to have a first lady like Mrs. Trump? Wouldn't it be beautiful to have a first family like the Trump family? 
Can you imagine what this country would look like if Bernie Sanders became